The university chancellor enters the auditorium where a lecture about genetic engineering occurs. A young teacher is drawing graphics and diagrams on the whiteboard, and students are redrawing them in their laptops. The chancellor knows that some of these students are not listening to the teacher. He walks around the audience and stands behind all the people. Who do you think is not focused on studying? All students are typing the formulas on their laptops. That girl over there is solving a crossword puzzle on her computer. Detective Richardson is chasing a robber dressed in a clown's outfit. The thief runs into the territory of a big carnival. There are a lot of clowns here. Help find the suspect among them. Catch that guy! His makeup is leaking since he's sweating after running. Also, he is the only one among all the clowns who took off the red nose since he needs to take a deep breath. Angelica gets out of the elevator and goes to her room. She puts a magnetic card to the lock to open the door. Then she turns on a kettle and a TV. At this moment, the phone rings. Angelica picks it up. Hello, it's your neighbor from the opposite apartment. I'm looking at someone trying to break into your house right now. A voice on the other end of the line says, He's trying to pick your lock with a lock pick. I'm sorry, it seems you've called the wrong number. Angelica tells him and hangs up. Why did she think that? Her door has a magnetic lock. Howard got stuck on a deserted island after an emergency landing on his biplane. He had no fuel and no means of communication. He spent the last few nights building a raft from bamboo. He also sewed sails from the parachute. And now, Howard is sailing away from the shore. At this moment, a storm begins. Waves and strong winds carry the small raft further from land, right into the center of the storm. And then, Howard notices a ship. He's screaming for help, but a big wave turns the ship over. There's no chance of salvation. The raft sinks next, and Howard loses consciousness. He wakes up on the island again, surrounded by the ship's wreckage. Howard looks around and starts yelling with happiness. It seems he's saved. Why? There are fuel cans among the wreckage. Howard can refuel his biplane and fly away from this place. There's a secret helicopter hangar hidden among trees at the edge of the forest. A squirrel got stuck on the ceiling between the beams. Johnny, the woodcutter, comes inside and notices the poor animal. He's going to rescue it, but he doesn't know how to get there. There are no stairs or anything that can be used to climb so high. Help him save the squirrel. There's an open vent on the ceiling. Johnny can get to the squirrel through the roof, but how? The hangar is located among the trees. Johnny can climb a tree and jump on the roof. The premiere of some fantastic movie about graffiti culture was held at one local cinema. Some of the viewers liked it so much that they painted the wall of the building. The police caught three suspects. But who's guilty? Look at this girl with blue hair. She has paint on her fingers. Leo, Brad, and Chris walk in the park and tell each other how they spent the weekend. All the guys look rich and successful, but in fact, only one of them is wealthy. Look at them carefully and try to guess who. It's Brad. See the advertising banner of a new action movie hanging on a skyscraper in the distance? Brad's face is on it. Linda comes out of the library. She doesn't notice the curb ahead, stumbles over it, and breaks the heel of her shoe. She calls a taxi and goes to the city center. There's a street with many fashionable boutiques. Linda doesn't know which store to go to. The best shoes in town, the sign on the first building says. The best shoes in the country is written on the second boutique. The best shoes on the continent, the sign on a fashion house lights up. 
The best shoes on the planet is written on the next one. Linda moves on. The best shoes in the solar system. The best shoes in the galaxy. The best shoes in the universe. Then, she notices a small shop at the end of the street. Linda chooses that one without hesitation. What was written there? The best shoes on this street. Roy is sitting in the classroom, listening to two teachers. They're saying essential mathematical formulas to prepare students for upcoming exams. Roy is writing down their words, but he doesn't keep up with the teachers. His hand hurts more and more. The notebook is running out of pages. The teacher's speech is accelerating. They're saying a lot of new information. Ah! How can Roy remember all of this? Help him! He needs to use the voice recorder on his phone. The plane takes off from the airport. A flight attendant walks through the cabin and sees two passengers arguing. The crew member asks what happened. Jay says that Courtney took his place. Courtney claims that this is her seat. They showed their tickets to the flight attendant. She tells them that the program couldn't sell two identical seats. She takes their boarding passes and immediately understands what the mistake is. Look at the tickets and tell who's right here. Seat 14F is written on both documents. Jay's takeoff time is 2.57 a.m. Courtney's is 2.57 p.m. It was sunny when the plane took off. Also, the sun is shining outside the window, so Jay's got on the wrong flight. Alexis runs at the stadium every day, preparing for an athletics championship. And it starts today. Alexis warms up and notices a skinny guy among other runners. His legs look weak and thin. Is he gonna run, Alexis wonders? All participants get up to the starting position. Three, two, one, go! Alexis is running as fast as she can. She's in the lead, and that guy runs much faster and doesn't look tired. He wins. But how did he do it? Alexis realizes he's not a real athlete. He's not even a human. But how did she know that? The guy doesn't sweat, he doesn't blink, and he has two left hands. It's raining. Mike tries to walk fast so as not to freeze. His three goats are following him. He comes out to the river and notices a raft on the shore, but it can only withstand one goat and one human at a time. A tiger is sitting on the other side of the river. Mike can't sail with one goat and leave it with the tiger. What should he do to cross the river? There's no need to cross the river this way. Look, there's a bridge far ahead. There's a house right in the middle of the hottest desert. There is no water, trees, or villages around. Four people live inside the building. The owner and his friends. An archaeologist, an oil worker, and a surveyor. The owner comes to the backyard and sees an empty jug. Who's drunk all the water? We don't have any supplies anymore. He screams loudly. All the friends are in shock too. Those who did that should go to the desert and get some water, he says. I was excavating in front of the house. I didn't touch the jug, the archaeologist replies. I extracted oil under the house. I didn't touch the water, the oil worker says. I was wandering through the desert in search of an underground river or lake, but I haven't found anything. There's no point in sending us there. You know, I think you've drunk it, the surveyor answers. What do you think? Who's guilty? Nobody. The jug was outside. The hot sand and the scorching sun dried it up. Dr. Phil works in a laboratory for the study of microorganisms. He's sitting in his office, reading a new scientific article. At this moment, someone knocks on the door. It's a young laboratory assistant. He looks scared and says he's met a real monster. It has several mouths, long tentacles, and one claw, the guy says. He locked it in the lab. Dr. Phil goes there to see it with his eyes. 
He turns the key in the lock. The door is opening slowly with a cracking sound. The doctor steps inside and… nothing. There's complete silence here. There's no monster. Or is there? Where do you think it is? The monster is microscopic, sitting in the test tube. This is a laboratory for the study of microorganisms, remember? One old head of a large financial company is going to retire, but who will be his heir? Who will be able to manage such a huge corporation? He's calling an emergency meeting. All employees gather in the conference room. The boss gives $100 to each of them. That's all I had when I arrived in this city for the first time. But I used this money wisely and became rich, he says. Who can use this banknote best of all will get the head position in the company. You have two weeks. At the appointed time, all the employees return to the conference room. Someone invested the money in startups. Someone bought shares from other companies. One guy just spent the $100 in a restaurant. Some smart people earned thousands of dollars. There were many worthy candidates, but none of them became the head of the company. Why? The reason is not related to money. The old boss passed away. One famous magician is performing on the stage. He's going to show his most spectacular trick. But, unfortunately, only one viewer has come to the show. The magician puts eight different cards on the table and covers them with a black cloth. He asks the viewer to come closer. Now you'll see two rows of four cards. I want you to select only one of them, but very quickly. Ready? The magician says. He lifts the cloth for one second, then covers the cards again. The viewer has chosen one card. The magician looks at him and whispers, Now close your eyes, think about the card, think of nothing else. I'm going to read your mind now. The spectator closes his eyes. After a few seconds, the magician tells him, Look at the table. I've removed your card and replaced it with a new one. The guy opens his eyes and it's magic. The magician has indeed removed the card he thought about. But how did he do it? There's no magic here. The magician replaced all the cards on the table with new ones. But the viewer didn't notice this since he was only focused on one card. Johnny is on a deserted island. He walks through the jungle and finds an old treasure chest. But as soon as he touches it, three zombie pirates come out from behind the trees. We've been protecting this gold for 500 years. You won't take it, one of them says. Johnny notices that something is wrong with these guys. They seem fake. But why? This pirate is wearing sneakers. See? The second one has a phone in his pocket. And the third pirate has a price tag attached to his saber. A famous courier service hires new staff. To get the job, candidates need to take a package and run a marathon in three hours. They easily cope with this task. Then, the boss asks them to swim the distance of the Olympic pool. One of the candidates stops halfway through the distance to take a breath. He drops out of the race. It leaves us with three participants. Now they have to pass a test in nuclear physics. Only two candidates make no mistakes. The third guy fails. And the last task is to conquer Everest. And here they are, climbing to the top. Remind me, what salary do they offer? One of them asks. $20 per hour, the second candidate answers. Finally, they get to the peak and meet the boss there. He looks at them and says, You both have made it so far, but I'll hire only one of you. Who will get this job? The first candidate. He's still carrying the package he got before the marathon. Two powerful film producers are having a breakfast in an expensive restaurant. They discuss the budget for a sequel to a very successful movie that got $500 million at the box office. 
They speak very quietly since they mention important details of the script. They suspect that someone might overhear them. The producers are right. Some curious people are indeed eavesdropping on their conversation. Find them. There's a guy at the table holding a magazine upside down. Obviously, he isn't reading it. He must be listening to the producers. That girl over there is a journalist. There's a camera lens sticking out of her backpack. See? She will post a video and fans will be able to read the producer's lips. That man is eating a salad, but you can notice a microphone hidden in his long hair. Three people are standing in front of an ice cream cart. The first guy is taking a cone from the cellar. The guy behind him is nervous. His hands are in his pockets. The third guy is looking at something through binoculars. Which of them is a police officer? Look at the first guy. He's got a police radio in his pocket. Where's my money? The owner of a diner screams. It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no clients in the diner. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees, trying to figure out who's the thief. Linda is wearing a pair of sunglasses, jeans, and a stylish t-shirt. She also has an expensive phone. Michael is dressed in costly designer clothes. Sarah is wearing a regular jacket and a long skirt. Who do you think has stolen the money? They're all telling the truth. Look at the sign on the door. Open, it says. This means people passing by the diner see the closed sign. The employees forget to turn it over, and that's why there have been no clients. Michael is walking down a long road. He's sweaty, hungry, and thirsty. There are no cars around, and his phone isn't working. Michael takes a few more steps and sits down on the road. He can't walk anymore. At this moment, he hears a vehicle approaching. A big bus appears on the road. It stops by Michael. Its doors open, but Michael doesn't get inside. He notices a car and a motorbike approaching. They stop by him too. All the drivers offer to give Michael a ride. What should he choose? The bus seems normal, but one of its tires is flat. The trip won't last long. Look at the biker. His face is hidden by a helmet, but he has hooves instead of feet. Mike chooses the car. One video blogger has been walking across a desert for several hours. The guy has no water left and he's losing strength, but his camera battery is fully charged. He climbs a small hill and sees three lakes, but not all of them are real. Help the blogger to identify illusions. He has a video camera. He should film the lakes. Mirages can't be recorded. A biker is traveling along a country road when he hears a scream. A woman is calling for help. She seems to be in the forest. The biker drives in her direction and sees three girls among trees. They're all begging to save them from a vampire. But which of you is the vampire? The man asks. It's her. The girl screams and points at one another. How can the biker find out who is human? There are two side mirrors on the motorcycle. The biker needs to turn the handlebars to check which girl has a reflection. Martin likes visiting abandoned factories and other buildings. Today, he's going to check a huge deserted shopping mall located on a remote island. According to some legends, the Minotaur lives inside the building. The creature looks like a human with a bull's head. Of course, Martin doesn't believe that. He takes a flashlight, a warm blanket, and a night vision camera. It's dark and cold inside. Martin hears a strange noise coming from the corridor. He shines a flashlight and sees the Minotaur. The monster looks angry. It aims its horns at Martin. What should the guy do? Faster! The bull is about to attack!
Remember that blanket that Martin took with him? The guy should throw it at the monster's muzzle to confuse the creature and escape. Michelle is in front of a locked door. An axe, a hammer, and a drill, and several other tools lie nearby. The girl tries to break down the door with the axe, but the door is metallic. Then, she tries to knock the door out with the hammer, and again, no result. Don't try to force it open. There's an easier way, a creepy voice says. Michelle tries to open the door by turning the handle, but it doesn't work either. What else can she do? Michelle should knock on the door. Starry sky, fresh cool air, endless dunes, a small campfire, and a tent. This place is a fairy tale. Sarah has always wanted to spend a night in a desert. She takes pictures of the stars, drinks hot tea from a thermos, and enjoys life. It's a perfect night. Too perfect. A smile disappears from Sarah's face. Everything is not real. Two signs indicate that Sarah is sleeping right now. What are these signs? Two moons are shining in the sky. A sea crab is looking at Sarah from the sand. But it's scorpions that usually live in deserts, not sea crabs. Mary opens her eyes and realizes that she's in an unknown place. The last thing she remembers is walking in the park and then darkness. There's a lot of trash in the room. A red lamp is flashing from the ceiling. Something must have happened here. Mary can leave through the door. It's open. But wait, she needs to take some useful stuff from the room. But what? She can only choose two items. Which ones? Mary needs to get scuba gear and a mask. Look at that small window. Fish are swimming by. Mary is underwater. Alex returns to his top floor apartment after a workout at the gym. He turns on his stove to cook some soup. When he's having lunch, someone knocks on the door. These are water utility workers. They say that the ceiling in Alex's apartment is about to collapse because his neighbors forgot to turn off a faucet. And now they're flooding the building. They ask the guy to evacuate immediately. Alex closes the door and calls the police. He's sure those two are thieves. How has Alex figured that out? He lives on the top floor. No one can flood him.